is going on, ladies and gentlemen? You know what it is. It's Thursday night. It's Star Bros. Thursday night. It is Star Bros. You guys like that music? I like that music. It reminds me of what uh, Lando Calrissian would be listening to if he was on the Falcon right now. That's why. That's. I mean, I think it's a cool music. Anyways. It's another Thursday night. That's Star Bros. You know what we do. Uh, we watch episode of Mandalorian, and then we jump on a Facebook call, and we talk about it. We talk about our highlights. We talk about what we what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, and uh, we talk about anything and everything Star Wars on Thursday nights. Um, tonight we have uh, a, a crowd on the call tonight, um, so this is going to be a fun episode. Uh, I have some of my... Uh, some of my family that are joining us on the Facebook call, and uh, so it's going to be a good time. Uh, these are the cousins that I would nerd out with. So, like, if if you know <laughs> how the conversation is going to go is going to be us basically around the kitchen table, nerding out over a board game or something, because that's pretty much what it was like when we would get together. It was just you'd be everything nerdy, Star Wars, you know, everything and everything pop culture was just these were my cousins that we had that conversation with. Anyways, all right. Um, tonight, uh, obviously, we have a familiar voice on the line. Uh, Luke, what's going on, bud? How's it going? Beastman Squats here. How's everybody tonight? Doing good, doing good. That's right, man. Hey, how's your uh, how's those motivational videos coming along? Uh, going good, actually. It's going good uh, right now. Just putting out, you know, every day I try to put on something. Lately, I just logged into my Strava yeah. just recently, so... I have some Strava stuff going up, so if you runners or bikers out there, uh, I have some. Uh, I have a couple of Strava, uh, you know, Strava updates up on uh, on the Facebook. Uh, you can look at me up on uh, Instagram, Beast Mode Squats, and uh, definitely come and check for, it out for daily fitness motivation. Beast daily Squats. fitness motivation. That's yep, Beast Mode Squats. <laughs> Um, and another familiar voice that we have on the call tonight, you heard on a Monday interview, uh, my cousin Natasha with, uh, Tasha Bakes. How is it going, Tasha? <laughs> it's going good. How are you? Doing great. Good. Doing, doing, doing really good. It's good to have yeah. you on the call. Excited to have you here tonight. It's always a fun time to hang out with you. Um, yeah, thank you. well, it's, it's Thursday night, so it's all everything Star Wars, um, I got to ask the question, if there was one Star Wars ship that you would love to have or that you've always like, thought was cool that stood out to you, which Star Wars ship would it be? Um, at the Death Star. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's a bold good. statement right there. That's that's good. Good. And the only reason I say that is because I want a fire pit that looks like the Death Star burning. Okay, that's okay, what yeah. I want. That's the yes, ship I want. Yeah. So I can burn it into my <laughs> fire pit. <laughs> that's good stuff. That was yeah. actually, that's funny because typically, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, the Millennium Falcon, or whatever, you know. Yeah. But that's everyone's Death choice, Star, though. Let's be outside. Well, not, Death Star I told, is, a, I is a bold three, statement. I, that's that's I a player move. So. It's also not a ship, no. it's a battle mm -hmm. station. Well, so there you have it. Uh, so yeah, we do have another Did I say the Kobayashi Maru? So we That's have. Star Trek. This we, is Star Wars. I know. I know. <laughs> the other voice you're hearing in the line is uh, another cousin of mine, is actually Tasha's older brother. Uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to have him on the line. Uh, he's uh, he's actually working on the front lines right now, and is uh, just we're just praying for his safety and that you know he's able to come home and and and, and stay safe during this 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 weird time. Uh, so I would like to introduce uh, my cousin Sam. What's going on, my man? <laughs> hey, nothing. You know, I'm trying to stay trying to stay safe out here in the in the trenches. Um, trying to you know, help people where you can. And, um, yeah, just trying to help wherever yeah. I'm needed. Man, no, we, awesome. are, awesome. I, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I, I've, it's, uh, it's just a strange thing, man. It's a, it's a whole new world out there. It's a whole new world right now. Yeah. Um, that puts a strange spin on that, right? A whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, anyway, so it, I want to give I want to give you that follow up question. What is what is, if because it's Star Wars? Obviously, everything Star Wars. What is your favorite Star Wars ship? My favorite. Your favorite, the one that it's stands uh, out the most. It's not really. So the cool, uh, the one that stands out the one the most, the one that I like the most, only because I like Boba Fett is Slave One. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why. But it, I mean, it's not all that particularly interesting looking, but it's only because who it's associated with. Right, right. Hey, man, if if, if, if that's your jam, that's your jam, man. You know what I'm saying, like. I'll, really, the Razor Crest is starting to grow on me. I think that's Mando. That's Mando's ship. That ship's starting to grow on me a bit. It's starting to become iconic, and it. I, I could. I could imagine. I don't know if they started merchandising it at all, but um, talk about merchandise. I know you guys grew up around a lot of the action figures, and you guys like know yeah. what you know what those are. Um, obviously, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we know what they look like. We just couldn't play with them. You could never touch them. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no, they were pinned Fucking to the boxes. wall. Like hey. I remember the day my dad's like, "Oh, this is a duplicate. You could have it." I'm like, "Yay!" <laughs> the duplicate. But, no, we couldn't touch it. So, how about can you guys give me uh, give me give me a little bit of your Star Wars street cred? Give me give give me a reason why we why you know like why your Star you know how you have some Star Wars street cred. I'll go first. Yes. Um, we're siblings, so our dad, we grew up watching Star Wars. Sometimes when I couldn't sleep at night, I'd be watching it, you know, just pop in the special VHS that had, like, six of them, you know, in the gold and uh, black box with Vader on it. Yes. Um, the merchandise. Yeah. Um, so we grew up watching it. My dad loved it. It grew into us. And then, I don't know if Sam wants to segue off this, but one time we actually hosted a weekend party while our parents were in Vegas. But it's not the party you think of. It was legit marathon of Star Wars from episode one to whatever they had, you know, At the time, basically yeah. through the originals. Um, and it got kind of crazy. The fight almost happened. I'm like, we're not drinking or doing drugs or anything. We're legit watching Star Wars. <laughs> and fights were happening. <laughs> like, what? Um, Come on, shot first. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's almost me. It's just, what we grew up with. I mean, I think our dad contributes a lot of to that, to that for sure. That's awesome. How about you, Sam? I mean, I wouldn't per se say like I have Star Wars street cred. I grew up loving Star Wars. I remember um, when I was first introduced on Star Wars, the first time I watched the original trilogy, it was a partly cloudy day. I was in second grade. And uh, I can remember the exact time that I was watching the original trilogy and how I fell in love with Star Wars. Plus, the gold box, when those VHSs came out, the gold box was uh, when Lucas went and added his own special effects, that gold box trilogy. Then there was also a silver box trilogy where that was without the added effects. There's difference. Mm-hmm. It wasn't all six. It was before the prequels came out. <laughs> okay. I'm younger than you. I just remember a lot of VHSs. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't know if he has Star Wars street cred. He doesn't. He doesn't know yeah. Star Wars. Street cred. If you want to drop knowledge on uh, certain boxes, we had both of them. I I still have two original uh, trilogy VHSs. I have the trilogy on Blu-ray. I have only the original trilogy. The the prequels I don't own. But, yeah, I just remember how Star Wars, like, first came into my life, and it's been not like a major staple where I'm learning all the lore or everything, but I do enjoy it. So, I I remember growing up, um, I'm not sure if it was you or maybe if it was your guys' dads, but I remember someone had a, I don't know if it was a Falcon or if it was a an X-Wing, um, but it, but the I'm talking the big like the big one like the that eighty dollar toy or was it it was it, I think it was like that it was that Y shaped one that Y shaped ship that the Imperials like would fly in. I can't. I don't you know. Sam if had I, the uh, the micro. Remember when like you would open them and have a little things like you had a lot of those. 
Um, I think we did have a big ship, but I don't think we were able to open it. I want to say we did. Because, I mean, as we got older, my dad, the stuff that never made money, the episode one stuff, yeah. made it to the swap meet. <laughs> <laughs> she had like 10 Queen Amadella dolls. And, oh, my God. Uh, but I want to say at one point we did have, I, yeah, we had so much. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah. the list goes on for me as far as like my my memorabilia collection just builds up over time. Like I don't even go out of my way to collect it. I'm just a fan that just like, oh, yeah, this is a Star Wars shirt. And oh, yeah, like that's a mm-hmm. Star Wars cell phone case. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that, you know. And at the end of the day, I'm like, what what happened? And, you know. <laughs> um, Anyway, so let's I let's I want to bring it back, guys. This is Thursday night. We do review Mandalorian episodes, and uh, tonight's episode was the season finale of season one. Uh, remember, we're working our way through the season, building up our suspense. Our our we're getting ready for the season two release of Mandalorian, and tonight's episode yep, yep. we are going to review is uh, episode eight. Luke, why don't you take it uh, from there? All righty, yeah, uh, you know, episode eight, redemption. Redemption. If you can hear me out there. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Basically, uh, uh, you know, on this episode, I I thought it was just there's a lot of heaviness to it. You know, there's a lot of the, the, the whole entire season ends on the note. You know, it ends on it. So it's um, basically like the episode. It's so crazy. It starts out, you know, they're riding away with Baby Yoda, you know, right right off the bat. You know, and um, basically, you know, in episode eight, Redemption, uh, you know, they're they 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 have Baby Yoda, you know, and he's just he's just chilling there. And one of the one of the stormtroopers just hits him off the bat, and it's like it's like, dude, you can't hit Baby Yoda, like you can't just slap yeah. Baby Yoda, <laughs> you know. So I mean, at this point, we are we got to know Baby Yoda. He's in it. You know, uh, you know, he opens up the little bag. One of the funny parts that I like, he opens up the bag, you know, and he goes over there to touch him and Baby Yoda bites his hand. <laughs> it's just like, okay, he's interacting with him already, you know. Um, and so I'm, I'm trying to, basically the start of this, I was trying to open it up, you know. Uh, IG-11 shows up and basically goes ham on goes ham basically you know ig11 yeah. he's a he's a he's he's a nurse droid at this point you know he kind of gets flip swap he gets swapped you know he kind right. of right uh they switch his functions to now he's he's a protector you know and you learn about that so what what were you guys' first reactions on that because like right, right when you first pick up on this episode like it's it's a baby yoda scene and i mean for me, I'm a huge Baby Yoda last- fan. Anything that if Baby Yoda <laughs> fell over or if he picks up his, if he, when he just looks at you, like for something, I think it just because he reminds me of Russell, my dog, so much that I like my heart kind of melts a little bit. I'm like, oh god, he needs my help. Oh god, <laughs> yeah. Um, but picking up on this episode, um, you know what? In the last episode, we kind of found out that you know Moff shows up, right? We find out in mm-hmm. episode seven, Moff Moff shows up. And what were you guys is what were you guys anticipating in this episode uh, going into it, picking up on that first spot where they, you know, first you see the you know obviously Baby Yoda's been captured and he's being returned, um, like picking up from there. Okay, so for me, uh, my expectations seeing Baby Yoda, I remember from episode seven, just my heartbreaking that he got like because he got stolen, you know, from yeah. the people protecting him. But then they threw in that comic relief for us. And um, for me, it's all like voice recognition. So I was like, how do I know that voice? And then one of the stormtroopers was Jason Sudeikis. And I was like, ah, oh, yes, know him, love him. So it kind of brought in humor for me, him, you know, being a comedic type of guy. Right, and, right, right. You know, the Yoda, you know, biting him and then of course uh when ig shows up you're like yes like he's gonna rescue him everything's gonna be okay (laughs) so we're not gonna be left with another sad death that we'll never recover from i know right Uh, yeah but i mean i don't know how about you sam what was your thoughts on that picking up on this episode beginning of episode eight um i mean i wasn't i wasn't expecting much i guess like all TVs I was expecting like all TV shows I was expecting for a cliffhanger to happen and the cliffhanger was kind of mild 
it was setting up definitely for a season two where they were stating like, oh, you need to find his species. Right, right. You need to watch over him. You're now like his father. That's your child. And this is the way that you have to do it. He's like, you want me to find this magic or sorcery like enemy? And so I wasn't expecting it to end in eight episodes. I didn't think that it was going to be the finale. I, when I went into it, I wasn't looking at anything online stating, oh, this is the last episode. Right, I wasn't okay. looking at any ads or anything. And then when it was end, when it ended on episode eight, I was slightly devastated because I wanted more of the story. I right. wanted to know. I didn't. I mean, as much as I like the the foundling the child as much as i enjoy baby yoda i want to know more about the creed i want to know more about the mandalorians mm -hmm. and their story no, I wasn't I, expecting much huh no no, no I, I i completely agree i think that's what this i think this episode really okay. tees up tees tees it up for us for season two to get deeper into the mandalorian story um, which is what I'm, I'm expecting because like, you know, like coming back to like the, um, like I didn't see that as being the last episode of the first season either. Cause I feel like there's a lot, I it left you wanting more like episode seven, the end of episode seven, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever, you know, like there's going to be a standoff. He's going to probably get through it, but we're going to, we're going to know more, you know? And then they just stop after episode eight and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I gotta wait yeah. a whole year for this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. You're left wanting, yeah. and that's not but the fun. thing is, there's so much stuff in episode eight. Though there's so much like little tidbits and stuff like that that very easy to miss. So easy to miss, but there's so much good information. Mm -hmm. I rewatched it, and I remember on my first watch, I felt like the that episode was kind of slow and mm -hmm. long, kind of mm -hmm. drawn out. And then rewatching it for for this for the podcast i i thought it went it was paced really well and it went by mm -hmm. way too quick yeah i had the same like, feeling <laughs> the tie fighter the tie fighter scene i was like man this is a really long fight i don't care about the tie fighter scene but then i was like what the tie fighter scene's over yeah exactly. when i watched it again i was like that was super quick how is this i i remember it way different well i think for me what it was about this episode that Okay, I like this episode. This episode's up there with now like my mm -hmm. top my top three now, I guess. So it's gonna be one, seven, no, one, six, and eight now are my top my top three, my top three episodes. Um, but before um watching it the first time through, like you said, I thought like, you know, okay, like let's just I didn't want it to be the last episode. There were the highlight moments in it. Like the IG moments were just so great in this episode. I wanted them to continue, you know? And, um, the same thing with the tie fighter episode, like, or the tie tie fighter part of the episode. Um, that whole entire scene is miraculous. It's this sort of, sort of like the big, the icing on the cake for like, you know, the stunts in, in the episode, I guess. So for me, that's kind of like, like you said, it just, it went by too fast. And I was like, okay. Cause I watched it. What two? I watched it two times for this episode. I watched it one time through, like in detail. The second time, I just skipped through everything. I literally, in the second time, I went through to watch it for this episode to record this show tonight. I was, I skipped. I want to say rewind. I rewound back maybe two or three times to rewatch parts because I just thought it was too quick. You know. Mm -hmm. So I should, I should, yeah, definitely share this the same thoughts about that. Luke, why don't you mm -hmm. give you some more of your highlights, man? What, uh... Well, one of my favorite parts, though, like kind of skipping forward into it, um, towards the end, you know, you see Moff Gideon pull out a dark saber. That's yeah. one of the first things that I – that was my biggest thing that I saw that was huge to me because I'm a big fan of Clone Wars, big fan of, of you know, the, 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 the other animated series, you know, in Star Wars – and so the dark saber really stuck out to me because, especially Mandalorians, it, that that was actually that's made by that's made by the by a Mandalore, by a Mandalorian yeah. originally dark saber, and so it's actually it's an ancient and unique black blade uh, lightsaber created by Tara Viz, Vizala, who is the first Mandalore ever, uh, who is inducted into the into the Jedi Order. 
Wow. That's it's a little, 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 little thing like that that I had to look up. Do you have a but, date uh, for that though? Is there a date for uh, that in the timeline? It's, I didn't get the date. I didn't get, but it's definitely before the purge. It's before, that, is that, this it, like, you think Old Republic? This is, it has to be Old Republic. Has to be. Or Old Because Republic. it's still, it's still, it, it's, it's still with the Jedi Order. They worked with the Jedi Order before. Yeah. You know, so it's like, okay. So it's in that. The reason the Darksaber is black, though, is because it did not use a uh, ruby or a, a kyber crystal. Wow. So um, if any, if, if it's used, it basically, uh, it's a dark saber. It actually is some kind of a black hole contained inside the lights, inside the saber itself. It's like a black hole. Jesus. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And so I was like, what the heck? It's so insane. You know? And they're actually, they were kept in the Jedi Temple. Um, they were kept in the Jedi Temple. Yeah, that's but right. But no one ever used them. we got a historian on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars historian. Hey, Luke, so where, like, do, where do you get all your facts from, Luke? Oh, my goodness. Uh, State Wikipedia. your sources. Yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia is one of them. Uh, Wikipedia. You know, uh, Jedi 911. Uh that's another one that they have. It's like another. It's like a whole thing about from Jedi clothing all the way till Jedi lightsaber crystal kyber crystals. Wow. Like you know, it's a you can look them up. Uh, really cool stuff. Hey Tasha, talk to me about um, maybe <laughs> some more. Of, give, give me another. Uh, any highlights that stick out to you um, in this episode? Yeah. So one thing that stuck out to me today for the first time ever was that I am like soul sisters or brother or whatever with baby Yoda because he does one thing and needs to take a nap. Yeah. Like that, that's me. <laughs> I was watching it. I'm like, we are the same little child, you and I. Oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh, but on a serious Star Wars note, the thing that stuck out to me was just um, IG basically, I think redeeming that a droid should be more than just a killer right. to Mando. Right. Because, you know, he stays behind. He's the one you see someone he takes off his helmet, he heals his head, and then he sacrifices himself at the end to save them and saying, like, no, if I get captured, it's in my, you know, thing to self destruct. Like, wait, aren't you a nurse? You know, you don't have to self destruct. Your goal is to protect the baby. But by him self destructing, he was still protecting the baby right. and lived right. out his new programming. And I think in the future we're obviously gonna have to have a new droid companion yeah so maybe mando is going to be a little bit less um not less figure. cautious but yeah like kind of maybe it. yeah yeah maybe 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 this droid reached him um and because in right. quill so so quill is like at the end of the end of episode seven he dies and like that kind of is the weight of the of the mm -hmm. season like the the hero of the season that dies is quill because he was the wisdom of all like the partners that mando had mm -hmm. right this is the way right. like he was just like about it. Um, yeah. So I, and I'm, maybe that's the lesson that is learned this season. Maybe that's a takeaway from the season, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? Uh, speaking on that, on, on takeaways from the season, Sam, can you give us any highlights that you, um, that you noticed in this, in this, uh, in this episode? Uh, the highlight is definitely the interaction between the two stormtroopers at the beginning Another one I saw was kind of like basic. You see all the time in TV shows. It wasn't really a highlight, but you always see where they're doing exposition or they're telling the audience what they need to know right. in the middle of the story. So they bring out, they bring out the, what is it, the web yeah, blaster? The e -web, yeah, the e web. The e web. The e web blaster, and then he goes, "If you don't know what this is," and he's not really telling the characters in the story is right. more like telling the audience. Yeah, that's true. That is, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you don't know what this is, let me tell you what it does. <laughs> Real quick. And then people like us on podcasts are like, yeah, it's an e-web. Duh. It's, it's, it's an e-web. Yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah, can't you tell? It's an e-web. And then, yeah, and then he goes about saying, oh, it did this to this pe group of people. And then Mando knows what it is. Just ask him. Yeah, exactly. It wiped out his whole family. <laughs> oh, that was so sad. I mean, it's like uh... you know, the one thing I did I did enjoy about this episode is that we end the episode with a crew, like with 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 sort of a well with with the group of characters, familiar faces, right? With Grief Cargan or 
we I don't know grief cardigan is pretty much what like the nickname that we came up with the last episode. I'm terrible with names. Don't quote me on names. I'm the worst with names. So like we end the episode with him, with Cara Dune, and with obviously Baby Yoda and Mando. And for me, that was kind of like a good... I like that. I like that we end the episode with those familiar faces. We did confirm that they will be in season two, obviously. Um, I want to talk to you guys about what are, what are your guys' expectations for season two? Um, like after... After knowing that, you know, Moff Gideon has the dark saber, after kind of figuring out what we heard the uh, the, the the Smith say to to Mando, right? She's like, "This is now your this is now your job to take return him to his kind, right?" We get the charge from like his the Smith, um, and she tells him like, you know, yeah, obviously take him back. And he's like, "Aren't they enemies?" And he he mentions like, you know, Jedi being these old wizards, these enemy wizards, or stuff like that. So. Um, with that in mind, uh, why don't you want, Luke, can you talk about that a little bit? Talk about like how Mando's given that charge to take the child back and what that means with season two, what you think that's going to include in season two. Um, well, basically with Mando, like he's like, well, you're, you know, the, the Smith, the, the blacksmith pretty much in star Wars tells him like, you know, he is yours to take care of. Like now he's your responsibility, you know? And so his thing is like, especially seeing the trailer and everything for uh, season two, yeah. it's like, okay, now we're trying to find out who is Baby Yoda, like, what does he do, like, where are his backgrounds, like, you have to find his, you find his kind, find his kind, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, everybody's like, no, like, the Jedi, you know? It's like, oh my gosh. So how is this going to play out, you know? Um Definitely, like we say, there everybody wants him, you know. Still, so it's like they know he's a force user. They know what he can do, you know. They're yeah. just like, well, obviously, is he is he a part of the Jedi? Is he is he gonna like you know? Obviously, um, he obviously has powers, so it's like they know. Yeah. But, but I wish there was some more. I hope the next season is gonna give us some more backstory to Baby Yoda, though, you know, because there was no backstory. There, there, you knew a lot about um, Mando because yeah. they even show the Great Purge. They show his parents hiding, hiding him in the hole. You know the Federation coming and killing everybody. You know, so you do see Mando's background. But I, w- I hope they like show something to Baby Yoda so we can have more in depth about him. No, I agree with you. I 100 percent agree with you. I think they need to do that too because, like, for me. That was a that was a thing. Like, there's just like we still don't know. We just call him Baby Yoda, you know. He's 50 years old. There has to be something that happened in those 50 years. Yep. Why don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Tosh? Come, you know, in light of like we the Smith telling him you need to go find his mm-hmm. family, and then the, the new trailer for season two just came out, and they repeat that message: you need to go find his family. Like, what are your thoughts? Right. So. Uh... I actually haven't watched the trailer yet. I'm just, I don't want to get myself too excited because I know I haven't done it because it's the 30th is far but close at the same time, you know? Oh my gosh. I don't want to hype myself up too much. I know. I, I, I know it's out there, but I'm just kind of like. Oh. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But uh, I agree with Luke. Like, I want a backstory. I want to know mm-hmm. more. Where did he come from? Um, Obviously, the ticket price for his head is big because he is using the force. And, you know, they did try to rule out or not rule out, but, you know, get rid of those who did use it. Um, So I do want to know the backstory. Um, I feel like the Smith maybe put that on Mando as well because Mando was an orphan and he found his place, Mm -hmm. you know, with the others. They brought him, you know, as a child, they brought him in. He followed the creed. Yeah. And I think this is a chance for Mando to bring our little creature into his little like family unit now it's kind of it's come from circle mm-hmm. yeah yeah you want to talk on that for a second Sam? Like, what are like, your thoughts all the unanswered questions there's so many unanswered questions with baby yoda why where was he trafficked from why was he like who discovered that he was a force user was he being trained he's 50 years old was he being trained in the force because a lot of the a lot of the people that we meet they're they're kind of, they kind of have 
an inkling of the force, but they ha they don't have a full understanding on how to use it. And with him being so adept with the force, being able to lift, yeah, uh, the mud horn, the mud, the mud horn. horn, being able to stop the fire. So him having that knowledge is kind of like who was training him, or is he just uniquely gifted? And then where was he taken from, and why was he in that fort surrounded by all those people? So there's so many unanswered questions with this child, and then everyone who comes in contact with him basically know that it that Baby Yoda is important, mm -hmm. or they they understand like oh they that they want him that they can get something out of him. Right, exactly, yeah, and that's because I mean obviously he's like become the package, you know he's he's just the hot commodity, he's the package now, mm -hmm. and. Yeah like you talk about the, all the unknowns that we're left with. And one of the thoughts that comes to my mind is this takes place. This is supposed to take place five years after return of the Jedi. Okay. That's the timeline. So in my mind, either Ben Solo is born or is, or is going to be born, you know, um, this, cause this is five years after return of the Jedi. So I don't know exactly where that works out, but does that mean that maybe baby Yoda, we could possibly see, Luke Skywalker, because we do know that Luke Skywalker started another Jedi temple, according to the new, mm -hmm. the new Star the Wars, new, right? The, the new, new trilogy that's out, right? Yeah. Right. So he did start a new Jedi temple. So I'm wondering if that's maybe a possibility that we might see in season two. You know, we know for a fact though that I mean, I, it, we are going to see, uh, we will see uh, Boba Fett. And so I can't wait for that. I heard that's 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 just out there already. So that's already confirmed. Uh, Boba Fett, also Ahsoka Tano will be in the next one, which leads to the 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 question like, okay, he has to find, like you said, you know, maybe he will meet Luke Skywalker. Who knows? You know, yeah. How is he gonna? You know, because if you're gonna meet Ahsoka Tano, like, come on, like. You gotta meet Luke Skywalker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, then the, here's the thing, though: is that Moff Gideon also has the the, the dark saber, right? So we have to, yeah. we can't forget about him. He shows up with this ancient artifact, and we're like, oh my gosh! Yeah. Like, so he's in the mix too. I mean, there's, I mean, really, there's a lot. Do, what are your guys' thoughts on next season? As like, far as like, what are some of the questions that, um, that you think are going to be answered in next season? I don't think we're going to find out the true origin yet because I think it's just too soon in the series. I think they're going to drag it. You know, I mean, American television, we love our 16 season series. Yeah, um, you're right. If, if we were in England, it'd probably wrap up at a good three and everyone would be satisfied and happy. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think that's a, burn yeah, that's a burning question I think we're not going to get to yet. I think we might discover more clues. It might take us on a few fun journeys, you know, meet old characters again, meet new characters. Um, we might see the Jedi new new training temple happen. Like, it's it's possible. It's Very open possible. ended. Yeah. Anything's possible and probable. But I mean, look at their Marvel timeline over at Disney. So who knows what their Mandalorian timeline looks like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, like, he's he's going towards the destination. He's trying mm -hmm. to find the species. So we're, all right, they're gonna he's gonna be looking for clues. He's going to be looking for answers, but at the same time, he's going to be on the run because he's getting tailed by Moff. Right. He's going to, he's going to get ch being chased by Moff. Everyone else around him, he gets a price on his head just by having the child with him. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, it's going to be a lot of like sneaking around and detective work. <laughs> Maybe mm. no R ish. <laughs> mm. That'll be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, okay. So there's a the thing though. Okay. Because in, in, in episode six, when they do the they do the heist, right? The jailbreak in episode six mm -hmm. with uh, what's his name? The uh, gosh, what's the actor's name? The guy who's in the that comedian? episode. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, in episode six, he's kind of like Batman in that episode. He shows up behind people and he's just just like, you know, just like right behind them, and he's just you know, kind of like, you know, how Batman. I guess the uh, Arkham Dark Knight feel, yeah. That's yeah, he's just like he exactly. He was tactical, Arkham like Dark Batman, Knight. like he, like James Bond. You know, just like James Bond. I think so. I think you're right. Like that, 
that that detective sort of like vibe that we're going to get him shaking people down, trying to get to the, um, the end of it, which reminds me of episode one. Um, I don't know if you remember, not episode one, episode two, episode two. Remember when, uh, and, um, when Obi-Wan Kenobi has to go hunt down, uh, Django Fett, right. <clears throat> And he does some detective work. And so we know that Disney, I think, is in the works with the Kenobi spinoff. So I wonder, like, yeah, if they're going to kind of. Gonna be, that's in the works right now. That'll be kind of. I'm excited for that, too. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if maybe they're probably going to. I mean, it could be the same thing. Like, we could see. Hmm. We could even potentially see Obi-Wan. We don't even. I mean. Right. This, I, I hope no, they, no, they we can. I'm sorry. No, we can't. He's too. dead. What am I talking about? No. Well, yeah. we see force ghosts. A force Obi-Wan. ghost, we could see. Yeah, yeah force ghosts, yeah. everyone, exactly. But, well, like Rogue One was very detective, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was very Mission Impossible. Like we got to find the plans. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get this. You know, is my father still alive? Who knows? Wait, he is. You know, I mean, it was yeah. a good. I mean, so they I might think, go that route. Like I agree with Sam. Like, Faja, it was Faja. It wasn't father. It was Faja. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Everyone curious knows. as to how they're going to fix their main star leaving the set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, so, I think I, I don't, with that, with Pedro Pascual. Wait, so is that how actually, is that, is that a addressed? confirmed, is that a confirmed thing that he left? Because I've heard rumors and that's, I've never mentioned on the, on the podcast because I've heard rumors. I'm not sure if it's a confirmed thing. It's speculation, I, I think. I don't know. No, well, it's saying no, he didn't quit. Okay. Yeah, that was that was something that I, yeah. I I'd heard that maybe he would like I heard that um he had disagreements about something about like um maybe him not having enough like actual like parts or like like face Without time. Without the helmet on. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. So I wasn't I wasn't sure if that was a true rumor or not, but that would definitely suck if they got rid of him. Yeah, I mean, you got to work it out. But if they don't, they just leave the helmet off or leave the helmet on for the rest of the series. Yeah. (laughs) What if that's the reason why they stuck to this entire script of uh, he has to keep the helmet on and they've only revealed his face in episode eight? I mean, I think it just adds to the lore of the Mandalorians. Like, no living thing has seen my face since since I took the creed. It just adds to the lore and the mysticism of their group. Like they're just like, this is a way. Are they mercenaries? Are they bounty hunters? What are they? Yeah. They're a group uh, devoted to like war tactics. So I think it just adds to it. Just we don't take off our helmets. We have all these rules that we don't that we that we stick to and we don't stray from. Because even in well, even in this episode, you see Mando get like blown, you know, just going crazy, and he's like, he tells IG like, no, don't, don't take my helmet, you know, yeah. don't, don't, and then he's like, IG's like, well, I'm not, no human has ever seen my face, and IG's like, I'm not. That human. fell flat. That fell flat for me. Like, I know it's supposed to be like sentimental, but that's not it fell flat. I'm he's human. like, I'm not human. It's like, it's like Lord of the Rings, yeah. Return of the King. Where he's like, no man can kill me. And she takes off her helmet and she's like, I don't know. No man. Excuse me, that has a lot of weight to it. <laughs> it was like well, that. It, it was flat. a cheesy, it was a cheesy yeah. piece. It was. It was. It's supposed to be like, <laughs> they felt like it was smart writing, but it just, it, it felt like a gimme line. I am no man. <laughs> no, oh, I'm man. not living. Yeah. I'm not uh, my favorite part though is like when um the uh, to, like to follow up with that though ig he's like i've never been alive and he's just like walking through the lava and you're yeah. like, <laughs> like don't even don't even go there man. like it goes back to that part that you talked about how ig sacrificed himself at the end of that episode yeah. one of the things i thought was cool in episode eight though is that we sort of got a little bit of like background like you said moff sam you had mentioned how moff like addresses the the viewers he doesn't he doesn't like talk to the He's talking to the characters, but he's actually addressing the viewers. And he talks, he actually says Mando's name. Um, Luke, why don't you talk about some of those facts? Oh, oh man. So, like, they basically, like, 
they're there. Uh, they he does tell him he calls him out. You know, uh, Din John or it's a, the, uh, I'm trying to exact. Is it Din John or Dij- Din John? Uh, Din John. Din John. Sorry, sorry about that. Dijorno. Like Django. The Django. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Not delivery. It's Dijorno. Dijorno. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So, Stop thinking about and, pizza, Todd. <laughs> and so he calls him out on it. It's like, bro, like this guy knows him. Like, dang, yeah. you know. It's like obviously, and he's like, well, and he also like tells him like, you know, we're the re, I'm the reason for you know Mandalore. You know, Mandalore. He knows about Mandalore being wiped well, he out. He knows about him, and then Kara says like, if he knows yeah. who you are, he knows who all of us. He are. knows who yeah. all What's of us. What's Kara's are. Kara's backstory and why she left her because right. she was a trooper, right? Yeah. She was a shock trooper, yeah. Mm-hmm. So why she left her group? So he was like, if he knows who you are, he knows who all of us are. Oh, exactly but, right. And so who's his? Yeah. And who's grief? Like, what's his backstory? Mm-hmm. Well, How did he, he get into? Well, he. Well, he's a uh, what's it called? He, he's he, he's he pretty much a leader of the guild. Like he starts. The like, he's the uh, he yeah. just he's the distributor of like the guild, whatever. The bucks. Like, yeah, the, the, the guild. The whatever the guild is. The counties. The, yeah, the whatever bounties. the guild is, he's like the he's the guy like who started the net that network on Navarro because that's he actually Navarro. talks about that at the end of episode eight. Yeah. He talks about them like, hey, we'll just start right. the guild here again. You know, like let's just start. Yeah. We're back let's in business. The guild up. <laughs> We're back in business. Yeah, the guild much, is yeah. Just bounty hunters, right? It's just bounty yeah, hunters. Yeah. But he has the connects, though. That's the thing is that he has the connects for all these bounty hunters. The, so. the guild, the guild, just reminds me of just the Destiny Phil, though. Like, <laughs> yeah. So for it's me, the Destiny. the cool thing that I like about the whole entire like that whole entire part about it when he starts, you know, mentioning some of the backstory, and we get we get Mando's name is that we end up get we get a little bit of information about Mando and about how he was like how he became a part of the. Uh, how he became a Mandalorian, right? So apparently yeah, I, he wasn't born on Mandalore, you know. So he was adopted into the Creed, right? He was he trained into the Creed. He yeah. trained in their in their like their their ways, and he was adopted into the Creed. And we we learned that, and so it was kind of like like you said, Tosh, full circle, where it comes back to him. He mm-hmm. has to take Baby Yoda now, which kind of gives me some ideas where I'm like, are we going to see a force wielding Mandalorian like? Yoda? Is that what we're going to see? Because if he, that's the case. Yeah, he was a. So, like, the armorer states. So he goes, I was a foundling. And, yeah. Uh, Mando says, I was a foundling. And then the armorer calls Baby Yoda a foundling. A foundling. Yeah. yeah. A foundling. So exactly. she, like, inducts him basically into, like, you, you need to train him now. Yeah. Right. And that's why she gives him that, you know, addition to his body armor. And then he gets his backpack with Jet. Yeah. Yes. The Rising Phoenix, the order. Yeah, the, the order. Were you the trained rise. in the Rising Phoenix? You trained in the Rising yeah. Phoenix. I'm just thinking of the MC Chris. Uh, my backpack's got jets. I'm Boba the Fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so for me that that was another highlight of this episode when he got his when he got his backpack because I was like, oh my god, we're actually going to see him fly, you know. <laughs> and we it, the payoff was actually really big at the very end because that was a crescendo of the episode for me, for because you know the scene where. He picks up the E web. Mando, they're getting this. They're getting a shootout towards the end of episode eight, and Mando mm-hmm. picks up the E web and he starts shooting out. He starts. Okay, let me let me just jog this back real quick. <laughs> Interruption in my mind. There was a scene right at the beginning with the two stormtroopers, right? And they made yeah. fun of the. They made fun of their terrible aim, right? Yeah, and this is an yeah, ongoing yeah. joke in Star Wars. And this, there was an opportunity for them to script it perfectly, where there was these two yeah. these two stormtroopers shooting at the trash, the little can, right? And they could yeah. not hit it for the life. They of couldn't it. hit it for nothing. Yeah, so the guy's shaking his gun. He's like, maybe you need new batteries or something like that. You exactly. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It was hilarious. But but, it, but then at the end of the episode, you see why why this is a joke because Mando literally picks up a, a Gatling gun off of it off of its legs, right? And he slow motion spins and shoots every single stormtrooper like in the scene. For so, I don't know how he had all this time in the world because there's lasers <laughs> everywhere just missing him, right? And he's just like and they're missing him, and I'm like, oh, and then that's when we that's when obviously when uh what's his name? I forget. Oh gosh. Moff, um, he Moff actually has good aim and he shoots his target and he blows he shoots, up Mando. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, he shoots. 
he shoots a power converter that blows up, and then it, yeah. I kind of view the Mandalorian as like it's almost like video game. Like he start he started off with level one armor. Yeah. And then yeah. As he went yeah. Into each episode, he started getting upgrades. So it was like destiny. It was like destiny. It was bro. like destiny exactly because you had your ship and everything just like destiny. <laughs> Getting oh, upgrades like here and there, and then in the final episode, they give him like the ultimate upgrade. Oh, the legendary like, armor. Yeah, he's got the yeah. backpack, and he has the Gatling gun now. Yeah. And then the, he gets the insignia. It's like, oh, now I get like different different patches. A customized <laughs> patch. Yeah, that's being a bounty hunter. Okay, so follow keep this going. Making my point though about the whole entire the jetpack. So. This scene, what was kind of disappointing about this episode, though, I will have to say, is that it was very similar to episode one. We still had IG saving the day like he did in episode one, right? And we still had sort of Mando. Remember when he jumps on the gun in the beginning of episode one? He spins around on the gun, right? And he fires. He blasts everybody. He picks up the Gatling gun and he does the spinning thing again, you know? So it's just like episode one. (laughs) Sort of like bookending the season with a mirrored image of those right. episodes, right? So for me, that was kind of like, eh, whatever, you know. I will say, though, the scene with Baby Yoda, and spoiler alert, he, when he used his power in this episode, that was awesome, actually. Luke, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Baby Yoda? Well, the part where he uses a force in this episode. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like, at this point, you know, they're, they're literally, they're pinned down. They're about to, like, this is it. This is the point. They're, they're all, like, looking at each other like, oh, this is it. We're done. We're done for, you know? Yeah. And uh, this guy, they're like, you see, you hear Moff Gideon's, like, burn him out. You know? It's like, oh, God. <laughs> it's like, burn him out. So he just goes in there. This guy, which the stormtrooper looks so dope though too, and his red, the red, yeah, that, the red that, stormtrooper. That was a really cool, super yeah. cool, super the cool stormtrooper. Yeah, iconography, like instead of using blood, they use red, like around his mouth. It was just like kind of like iconography. The red, the fire, the red, like signifying fire because he's the fire, like yeah, he's a fire the trooper. But yeah. also looking like his mouth is just dripping blood because it's red. It and was he so just cool. looked imposing and threatening. Yes, yes. And so you just see him like walk up there like a like just a, a, a just like you know. Like he's never hardcore. lost a battle. Yeah, he exactly. just goes like I'm gonna win. Yeah, this. he's like, like I'm uh, gonna take it. And yeah. he just he goes in there and just you know he ignites his he ignites his flamethrower you know and everybody's like grief grief Carnegie you know everybody's ready to die, yeah. everybody's like this is right. it guys this is the end. And then you just like you could just see this little figure just like hobble, you know, just hey, hey, hey you know. You but isn't it? It's so cute how he does it. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, he's so cute. It's, it's baby Yoda. And then just as soon as the fire comes, you see like the music totally changes. Dun 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 dun. You know, you just see his little his little paws, his three his little, little paws. <laughs> Speaking of what like Zach said earlier, he's like, "Oh, a lot of it was callbacks," and then you get a callback when they're in the lava river, and grief is like, "Oh, do your hand thing." Do your hand thing, baby. Baby Yoda just waves. (laughs) (laughs) That was so good. When he's He's retired from the one thing he did. (laughs) Yes, it's It's so funny though. Yeah, you know, and to see that, you know, okay, now we know like this guy can lift up a mad horn. He can. He a mud he horn. Can he could lift up a mud horn. He could heal people. Mm-hmm. He could stop fire in midair. Like holy snap! Yeah. Like yeah. what else can this guy do? Like Jesus, you yeah. know? Speaking he of can Jesus, he seems very parallel to Jesus. <laughs> I mean, Everyone wants, wants to kill him. Everyone wants to kill him. You know? <laughs> did anyone yeah, else? Right. I was when they were going to the lava river. Did anyone else look up how hot lava is? Because no. I found myself googling how hot it is. <laughs> like, no, how is this boat floating on this yeah. river of lava? I know. I, right? I don't know what that. this boat was made of. It. What's what is this boat made of? I need to know how it's surviving on lava. 
<laughs> but I think that's the first time you see like an R2 unit though, right though? Yeah, so we the, the, the whole thing, you that's the first time you see an astromech, R2 unit. an astromech droid that that yeah. that's actually what R2's called, but it's an astromech droid that we see, but he actually has legs and arms, which legs and arms, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how it's totally is, different. How are you guys just passing over this boat? Floating on the <laughs> because there was an astromech droid that had legs. That's because why we, seen, we, we already right, seen very it. Very cavalier. This boat's floating on lava, and you guys are just like, no, you know what's better? This no, R two <laughs> legs. <laughs> Look, when I was watching it. So when I was rewatching I'm it, my thought, something miraculous here. <laughs> my thought process was, lava. what is the boat made of? What kind of material is surviving? That's what I want to know. Well, lava. you know, what? well, it could have been using the same stuff from Revenge of the Sith. Remember when they're fighting Anakin and Obi Wan? No, they're fighting on the, top Those of lava. were they're levitating floating. over. Yeah, they were floating over the lava. They're levitating, yeah. right? They're floating they were, over. Those were two Jesuses with lightsabers. <laughs> they were walking on lava. <laughs> walking on lava. Oh my god. I mean, is it made out of lava rock? Like, yeah, no, you don't know. Right. You know. Know. Maybe that's something I, else. I, that right? was just me. I'll, and so everyone knows it's between 2200 Fahrenheit. That's a hot one. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was just uh, very. Uh, I, uh, about the lava well, my thought was my here. Here's my thought was uh, at the end of that scene, IG Eleven he he blows up at the you know at the end yeah. and he kills at a bunch the, of stormtroopers, and we finally yeah. see grief and we see we see Mando, we see Baby Yoda and Cara Dune. We see them finally get out of the 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 uh, the sewers where they meet, reach the, the river lava. They take the river of lava out. They finally escape the city, and then we hear the Tie Fighter come in, and that's where we get. Yeah. Yeah. Moff Gideon chase him down in his Tie Fighter, which is a pretty cool Tie Fighter, by the way. I thought mm-hmm. I think it was a really cool one. And in this scene, there happens to be a pretty I thought was ridiculous part, but it was still it was still the highlight for me. Um, we actually get to see Mando use his jetpack in this scene, right? And the cool part about it, this is the part that I, I I thought was genius though was when he he shoots up into the air, right over the Tie Fighter, and then he uses his he uses his uh his cable, right? His, his, uh, his grappling cable in order to mm-hmm. actually, um, get onto the ship. Right. And in this scene, you see him mm-hmm. flying through the air attached to the tie fighter. And to me, that the was probably, moves, yeah. yeah, that to me, that was a highlight of the episode. I was the whole entire time I'm thinking like, Oh my God, my, the whole entire time I was thinking like his wrist, his arm, he's probably like, he should be <laughs> dead right now. You know? Yeah, definitely. What I didn't understand was how like, the armor told him that you need to do your drills and then it's not going to listen to you until like you've learned it or whatever. Yeah. But then he's he was able to use it. <laughs> he said, I think she, she said, she said something on lines of like, you won't be able, it won't, you won't be able to use it until you're fully healed. And then she followed that up with, uh, that, you won't, it won't listen to you until you're feel fully healed. So like, it won't like it. Uh, I don't know if right. what that means necessarily, it but, won't she, obey your commands but yeah, until. but, but, it, but specific, I think what I heard was until you're fully healed. So I think it had to do something with his health more than him learning the technique or something like that. Because not, he not had, his childhood trauma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was healed from his childhood trauma. You know? Who, knows? Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Well, because because the thing is, like, he already has a training to use it, right? He already went to training for right. it. Yeah. She asked him, "Did you do your training in the Rising Phoenix?" He's like, "Yes, I have." Yes, I so have. He so knows, he already knows. He already knows how to use it. And one of the things I also remember too th- was that um, think about Boba Fett and think about his and think about Jango's. Right? What? How? Oh. How did they use their their jetpacks? To get just to get around real fast, like get make it easier. I thought like they used like but I thought they had like a like a little trigger. What's well, what's his name? Well, no, um, Boba. I mean, Boba Fett had a little trigger thing. Jango Fett didn't. Jango, Jango Fett, Fett could just fly. He didn't have a trigger. Um, yeah, but I know. I if I'm not mistaken, I think Boba might have had a trigger. He had like a little hand thing. Or yeah, hand so trigger, maybe. So I'm kind of confused as to how that works too. You know, I'm not sure exactly how that how that actually works with him. Yeah. 
Well, everybody's and every every Mandalore suits different though too to their own type because even in the before episodes, like you see when they walk in and they see the Creed and everything of all of them, they all have like different types of suits. You Mixed have the heavy armor, armor and stuff. Yeah. Mix, yeah. So everybody has a different type of armor. Maybe it just felt that it needed him, you know, he needed to use it in that moment. So it made itself available to him. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it Much was. Much like Cinderella <laughs> getting her godmother right before the big dance. Like <laughs> That's what it was. It was this Disney moment. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of pixie dust and we're on our way. There you go. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to ask you guys one more question before we uh, finish up this episode of Star Wars tonight. We're reaching about an hour right now. We're getting close, close to an hour. Uh, we'll want to go around the table one more time, get you guys opinions on, on, on some, on this last question. Uh, looking into season two. Okay. Uh, give me your guys uh, give me your highlight, best episode, favorite, favorite episode of season one. Uh, give me uh, a highlight moment from season one and give me a, um, we'll say another character that you want to see in season two. You want to know more about in season two specifically. Is it Mando? Is it Baby Yoda? Is it Cara Dune? You know? Um, so yeah, why don't you take that question and, and roll with it, Tasha? Me, me first. <laughs> um, gosh, like my favorite episode, I think that kind of left me like, wow, like I really enjoyed every minute of this one was the uh, prison escape one. Yeah. Just because it was something different. We're dropped in this like kind of new world. And then like, all, like you said earlier, all the Batman skills, things he had to do in order to like get out safe. Like I just really enjoyed that kind of cat and ga- uh, cat and mouse game. Yeah, exactly. That was yeah. going on. Um, as far as going into the you know new season, um, character... I would love to see again, um, I guess would be another droid character. So mm-hmm. not necessarily IG cause we know he's dead, but like, I, I, I love like the vibes like K2 gave us, you know, yeah, and, exactly, you know Rogue yeah. One, like yeah. C3PO. Mm-hmm. Like I just love that whole, cause it's like a dog, to be honest. It's like yeah. that relationship. Like you would have like, this is my pet and you know, the back and forth. Like I like that banter with the whole like, logical aspect of a droid and a human like the interaction yeah so i would love to see another droid character going into the next season nice no i agree with you i totally agree with you about the dog analogy because i i came up with it i came up with an idea i think russell my dog has like a bb8 type of spirit you know like he's not like he's not the r2 unit he's not like refined like c3po but he's got a little bit of an attitude and he's still a baby so he's got that bb8 vibe you know what i'm saying that's kind of like that's just his his little thing um i think my dog is kind of like the one that's like always like the comb you know the old one they find oh gosh what's his name Oh, Gio, 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 yeah, Gio. Like my dog's like that because she don't want to get, you know, she doesn't want to deal with anyone's crap. She's old, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm set in my ways. <laughs> yeah. Don't even t- don't talk to me. Don't look at me. No, yeah. I know. Actually, my dog's like that. You can't look at him. If you look at him in the eye, he freaks out. Like, don't look at him. <laughs> He'll be all right. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Sam, let me get give me a highlight moment for season one your favorite episode of season one and give me a character that you want to see more of in season two. Uh, highlight moment is definitely when the armor takes on the stormtroopers in episode eight by herself. She's sitting there. She looks like she's praying. She has her hammer and then she has like the tong things and then she gets up and just wrecks face. You see a yes. stormtroopers yeah. helmet get caved in. It's pretty gnarly. I want to know more about her. I want to see her give, I want to see her build more armor for Mando. And then my favorite episode is episode two. I think you meet the most endearing character in the whole thing, which is Quill. His mm-hmm. death was way Definitely. more impactful yeah. than IG-11s. Mm-hmm. I also think that you also, even though the child is introduced in episode one, you get more. You you get more of the child in episode two. You get to see what yeah. the child is about. The cuteness factor gets turned up to eleven, and yeah. um, I think it's just good overall. Like number two just sets it up with so many. Even though one saw the child, I feel like it 
two sets up the child much more and yeah. it sets up Quill. Yeah. Shout out Quill. The real MVP. Quill. <laughs> R.I.P. Obviously R. and Quill. well well obviously and then well in episode two you also Suka Suka <laughs> so episode two I think I think is overall the best episode. It was the best it was a great episode. Six great is good. Episode. Six is good, but there are some like low points. I felt I mean it was good, it was fun. I don't know. Two, like, for I me, think... I I liked six. I liked six, like just for that that like the cat and mouse game of it. For me, yeah. it kept the episode fresh because yeah. there was a couple episodes that were a little were a little a little long winded, you know, leading up mm-hmm. to six, where you're like, oh, okay, like we can get through this part of the story. It was but a nice change of pace. It was a nice change of pace. Probably that, that's probably why it sticks out so much to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Luke, uh, give me a highlight from season one, your favorite episode, and a character you oh. want to see more of in season two. Oh, man. Uh, well, a highlight, okay. Uh, I got to say, um, obviously, you know, Jesus. Like, don't give me, I think in The Sin, episode three, uh, even though it wasn't like crazy, crazy, the fact of the matter is, is the blacksmith how she turns the metal into armor yeah you know and getting to see that process yeah you know and it's like oh that's so cool you know that that's how they get their armor how it's made out of the 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 metals you know i liked that process i liked how we got to see that yeah that was a big eye opener for me that was a big standout in the whole season yeah that's one of the big standouts you know how he gets his metal how it's made because you never see that you never get to see how how the armor's made. You never, you just know that the Mandalores are, Mandalorians are fighters. They're great fighters. Well, why are they great fighters? Well, their steel and their metals are totally different. They're strong, you know. Yeah. They're, 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 the melting process, the welding process on it, everything is totally, it's 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 made a certain way. Yeah, because, because actually the client, he even says, he says it's when, he says how, look how beautiful Baskar is when it's in its, <laughs> And when it's in its like original people's hands, you know, he makes that comment. So no, you're right. That is a, that's a huge takeaway for season one. It's it's a big it's a big takeaway because you never you never learn about the Mandalorian armor. You never hear about that. So I I, I liked the sin because we got to see the Mandalorian armor being made and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Super awesome. Uh, that was obviously a big highlight throughout the whole the whole season. Uh, but obviously, of course, Baby Yoda had his moments. <laughs> you know, but uh, definitely I want to see more about definitely I want to see more about how they work into more of the Mandalorian race. How do they how does that coexist in the in the future? You know, yeah, definitely leading up, you know, because we we see like these side missions. We get the side missions. We see Baby Yoda and his cuteness. We get to see we're going to learn more about uh, Jin, uh, uh, his mando's like backstory and stuff like that i hope that opens up even more to uh about him and the great purge you know his parents and everything what happened and uh i hope i hope we get more backstory to that too you know maybe he meets somebody that was there you know during that time yeah in the future and they're like he's like hey i knew your parents or something like that and it's like oh tell me more yeah. you know maybe maybe his parents were in part of something bigger you know and he's just a bigger character than we know right no i mean that's exciting man i know i'm you know that i got the same questions in my mind too you know and um guys we just hit an hour so i'm gonna try to we're gonna (laughs) gonna wind this thing down um we're gonna go ahead and head off head over to this the the sign off now um but it's a good conversation tonight i think there's a lot of things that we can look forward to to season two i'm excited um, those of yeah. you guys that are listening to the podcast, thank you guys for uh, listening through Star Wars with us from episode one to episode eight. Uh, really appreciate you guys uh, participating with us and listening and and watching the episodes and just participating, you know, liking and subscribing, all those things. Um, real quick, guys, um, now's your opportunity for any shout outs. Uh, if you guys want to, you know, shout somebody out, say thank you, or you want to shout out some sort of Instagram or social media, now's your opportunity. I'm going to start with you, Tasha, and we'll just make our way around. Yeah. Uh, just my Instagram page at fakes underscore by underscore Tasha. Um, check that out. At 
the end of this month, I'm going to be able to post a link. I'm actually got uh, selected for a contest for home bakers. Um, only a handful were selected. I have a profile page. I'm, you know, building as we're able to proceed, and the winner gets ten grand, a feature in a magazine, and marshmallows for a year. So. <laughs> Well, well yeah, let's get you on the podcast great. again. We'll record another episode so yeah. we can talk about that, okay? And we can we can we can Definitely. put that out there. Sam, any shout outs from you, bud? No, nope, I don't do social media. And, uh, <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to dedicate the, he the lives next under song a rock. to Little Joker. <laughs> yeah, I don't do social media. I, uh, he doesn't do social if media. You want a good book? Oh man, yeah, suggest a book. Uh, if you want a good book, you can read Hillbilly Elegy. Hillbilly Elegy. And, uh, who's yeah. the who's the who's the author? Let me get that for you. <laughs> I just know what it's called. It's a very good book. It talks about how even though people think that we're we're different, our values and everything is the same. Like Southerners think that black people and white people have different stuff, but it they stem from the very same values mm-hmm. and basically the same culture. So it's totally elegy and it's by G J D Vance. Awesome, man. No, I definitely have to take a look at that. I'll definitely, I'll definitely take a look at that. Luke shout outs. Social media. Uh, Beast Mode us. squats here. Beast Mode squats here. Uh, definitely check, uh, check out the Instagram. Uh, check me out. Beast Mode squats uh, for your fitness, daily fitness goals and expectations, mm-hmm. daily runs, uh, you know, Definitely uh, come on down and look at Beast Mode Squats uh, every day. Oh. Try to post something, you know what I'm saying? What are they looking at when you squat? <laughs> <laughs> that oh, daily geez. fitness, can I get a witness? <laughs> daily fitness, can I get a witness? <laughs> Ooh, that's the shirt, dude. <laughs> daily fitness, can I get a witness? You guys heard it here. You know? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, that concludes our episode. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Average Fells Podcast. This is Thursday night, and it's Star Bros, guys. Hey, I just want to say thank you guys for listening. Uh, We reached 700 downloads and still climbing, so thank you guys so much for helping us out. Like, subscribe, rate, all those good things. It helps us get noticed in the directories. Um, Thank you for sharing and all those things, guys. And once again, this is the Average Fells Podcast, and I'm your host, Zodizak, signing off on another lovely Thursday night. Ah, yeah. I was going to bring a very heavy-handed subject up during the podcast. I was going to bring up how uh, the whole season's basically bringing, like, skirting over child trafficking.